Hey everybody, Ethan here from WordTech, back with another video for you guys. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but I got some good stuff coming up here soon, I promise. So, um, <clears throat> today is actually going to be an interesting video. It's going to be a server-related video, which you probably guessed by seeing the two for you chassis that I have on here, and a lot of Noctua fans. So, this video today is just going to be me basically transplanting my two current servers that are in desktop chassis into rack mount chassis so that I can put them in the uh, rack over there. I've been really sick of them sitting out on the floor for one of my bigger ones and on the counter which you can't see, or no you can't see that, yeah right over there. So I'm wanting to put them in rack mount chassis and then that way they're going to be uh, higher availability, less likely somebody trips on them, takes up less space, etc, etc. So I decided to go with a couple of these Rosewell cases, and I'm actually, I haven't built them yet, but I've looked at them a lot, and so far I am very impressed with these Rosewell chassis. They are really nice, they're really high quality, um, pretty impressed with them, and they each support seven fans, which is why you see all the fans here on the table. Now, these do actually come with seven fans, but they're stock Rosewell fans, so like no way that I'm going to use those. So the first thing I did when I purchased these is also purchase a bunch of Noctua fans to go in there. So it's uh, five 520 millimeters and 280 millimeters in each chassis, and they do support, uh, I believe it's up to XL ATX motherboards and uh, full ATX power supplies, which is really great because that's what I'm using in my current setups. So I can just slot them in here. It's pretty simple. It's basically taking a desktop case flipping it on its side and adding a little bit of stuff, but it's it's obviously they're, they're black coated on the outside, the inside silver, who cares? They're really cheap, um, they support I think eight hard drives each, and also they do support three or five and a quarter inch drives, which I'm really excited for because one of my servers I uh, use for uh, ripping uh, disks, so I need the five and a quarter inch bay drive, which a lot of server chassis actually don't have anymore. So. Um, those, I mean, five and quarter inch isn't that common in servers. Uh, you generally will have like a slim loading, slot loading DVD drive that you use in case you need to install legacy drivers or something like that, but generally speaking, you won't see them. Um, so, the other things that are going on here other than just transplanting is obviously adding the new fans, and I got these interesting brackets that I'm going to play around with. So, um, unfortunately, I could not get a hold of the brackets specifically for these Rosewell cases to rack mount them. So I got these uh, StarTech brackets instead that basically build like a like a frame to set stuff on. And I'm going to give them a shot to see if they work. They're rated up to a pretty massive weight capacity. I think it's like 135 pounds or, you know, these might be the 250 pound model. I can't remember which one I grabbed. but. Um, they're designed to hold like 4U chassis basically. My only concern is that it might, because of the added thickness, technically use up an extra U in my setup um, because if it's using even a partial U, you're, you can't fit another thing right above it. So we'll see how that goes. That's something I'm going to be testing out in this video. If I have to, I'll try and get the rails for these Rosewell cases, but I don't know yet if, um, if those are ever going to be available because I have not seen them at the time of filming this video between here and back when I bought these, which was about a month ago. <laughs> so, we'll see how this goes. Um, so mostly I'm just gonna be transplanting them and then mounting them into the rack and showing you guys what that looks like. Uh, I've got a rack cleanup video of sorts coming where I, um, I'm gonna be remounting some stuff, maybe adding some li more lighting in there. Um, and I've got two gigabit internet now through two different plans, and so like those modems need to be mounted in there properly and stuff like that. So, uh, I do have a video coming on that. And then don't worry, I do have a review coming very soon of my FX Tech Pro 1 and my Model F keyboard. So the, that phone, full QWERTY keyboard phone, I've got some interesting thoughts on it. And um, yeah, definitely stay tuned. I'm not using it as my daily driver anymore, so you may be interested to hear why, because a lot of people have been pretty positive about it. Now, really quick to do a spec rundown of what's going to go in each of these systems. Um, and actually, as you can see, I've got a little bit of new specs to put in here. So uh, I've got another 16 gigs of ECC RAM to put in each because each one's only running 16 right now. And while one of these is a Windows machine, it's going to be getting converted to Proxmox virtual environment where you use ZFS if you're doing redundancy. You know, a lot of times we'll use ZSF, ZFS file system, which uses a ton of RAM. And so I am going to need more RAM if I really want to spin up a lot of VMs on it. So I'm up in them, the 32 each. And then the other 16 gigs is going in my current Proxmox machine, which I've been happy enough with that I'm converting the Windows machine completely to Proxmox. Um, no, it's not a Windows Server machine, it's a Windows 10 machine. I have been using it for hosting things like Plex and Minecraft, mostly Plex being the important one there, because I've had better experiences with using GPU acceleration transcoding for Plex in Windows, so I will still have a Windows VM on one of these that has GPU pass-through for doing exactly that. But with the added RAM, I can spin up a bunch of extra Linux VMs, other stuff like that. Proxmox is amazing. I 
I really love using it, so I'm excited to have two machines running it, and actually eventually a third. I'll make a video on that one later, though. And um, one of the things that I like to do when I'm doing a big virtualization environment is data redundancy becomes more of a problem, because if you lose a drive, you might lose 12 machines, and that's a much bigger deal than just one. Uh, even with backups, that's a huge pain in the ass to fix. And I do have backups to my 48 terabyte free NAS, but uh, I decided to grab another 500 gig WD Blue drive, which is what's running in the Windows machine, to start, and then I'll probably add more SSDs later if I start to add more big VMs. The other Proxmox build has two Intel 1.6 terabyte drives. Those are their enterprise drives. Got those used on <laughs> amazing price. So uh, to go over the rest of the specs rundown, let's say, I don't know which one's going in which, but let's say this is the current Proxmox machine. Uh, so that has the dual 1.6 terabyte Intel SSDs. It's also got a Threadripper 1950X with an ASRock X399 professional gaming board. I'm using uh, Noctua coolers on everything because, I mean, you can tell I'm a Noctua fan. You can probably see there's Right here is literally a pile of Noctua boxes going all the way up. I, I really like their stuff, and so I'm using their coolers as well um, on both of the builds. Same cooler, actually. It's the uh, NHU9, I think is what it is. Um, it's the TR4 edition, so it's a really thick, kind of short heat sink that you can put smaller fans on, so it will fit in for you, and in maybe even a 3U case it would fit in. Um, so that that's that, and then I've got ECC RAM, two 16-gig sticks is going in each, so 32 gigs total. Eventually I want to max that out on them since I'm doing virtualization, or at least get up to 64, but for now, 32 is functional. Um, and then as for power supplies, uh, I believe I'm rocking a, um, trying to remember what I have in each. I've got the 1500 watt Silverstone in um, the other build, which will go in one of the other cases. Uh, and then I've got, I think it's an 850 watt RMX power supply from Corsair in the other one. Um, the RMX one I bought specifically for it, so I figured that's plenty of power. I know the 1500 watts is overkill for what I'm doing, but that's a power supply I had laying around, so I decided to use it. Um, so, and then each one will have a GPU. One has a uh, Asus Strix 960, the other one has an NVIDIA Reference 970. Now, those aren't high-end GPUs, but the 970 does a pretty great job with Plex transcoding at 1080p, and um, it's really I don't need anything high-end in them, right? So at least for now, I'm not doing any major GPU rendering or anything on my servers. That all happens on my 3970X workstation with 210 ETI. So no need for high-end GPUs. Um, so that's the specs of the one Proxmox machine. And then the other one that's going to be getting converted to Proxmox is a Threadripper 1920X with an Asus uh, Prime motherboard. I can't remember the exact model. Um, also 32 gigs of RAM will be in that one. The two 500 gigabyte WD Blue drives. Noctua fans, Noctua cooler, all that stuff. Um, and then I mentioned the 970 in it. It's also got a one terabyte hard drive. It's got a DVD drive and a Blu-ray drive in it so that I can uh, rip discs totally, you know, just my own content that I've made. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing that's gonna differentiate on that one is since that's running Plex and um, I potentially have a lot of uh, data moving in and out, is I'm gonna be installing this 10 gigabit NIC that I have for it, and this is um, an Intel dual 10 gigabit NIC. Uh, it's SFP plus, so I actually don't have the adapters for it yet. So I'm gonna install it, but not use it yet. However, I also don't have the switch for it yet. I'm getting a 16 port 10 gigabit switch backplane for all these servers to communicate uh, with each other because the bandwidth is gonna be needed. Um, so that's just gonna be slotted in there, but not used. So anyway, we'll jump straight into the build. I'll do a time lapse of the build process, and then. Um, probably show you guys what it looks like in the rack afterwards. Uh, spoiler alert, this rack is a total mess right now and it still will be because I've got to redo all the cabling and stuff all in kind of one sitting. So these are just going to be shoved in there, plugged in and networked up and powered on. They're not going to be cleaned up. Um, but I'm pretty excited to do this. I've been wanting to move those into rack cases for a while. So um, let's just jump into it.
All right, everybody. So the build was a success. Now I say build, not builds, because I have not finished the other one yet. Um, unfortunately, I just didn't have time to do that before I wanted to finish this video, and uh, it's kind of redundant to show you guys assembling two systems in the exact same case. So I figured I would go ahead and just end it at this point and tell you guys what the case is like a little bit. Um, so first things first, though, I'm actually really happy with the way the build, tur build turned out. Yes, I know the cable management was terrible, and that's totally fine. Servers, it doesn't matter I don't care um, and all the fans are fully functional everything's working they're nice and quiet I might want to turn the speeds down a little bit on them because they are slightly audible but uh, I think a couple of them actually might be running at max speed which is potentially part of why so maybe I should have used some of these ultra low noise adapters to uh, limit that and I just didn't think about it while building it but luckily with the way they're mounted it's really easy to actually pull them out so um, I did use the as you guys saw in the time lapse I used the brackets the shelves for these because I still can't find the rails available anywhere I checked to see if new had them before I started this build to see if I could rush ship them here to use those instead and they don't um, they're out of stock they, they can't Again, but they're out of stock they've been out of stock for a long time um, and I was correct with the shelf unfortunately while it's a very nice shelf uh, and really actually solidly constructed and very adjustable um, it uses a little bit more space than what they claim basically uh, because there's a thick rod on the bottom of it that, that um, helps brace the entire thing which is part of why the weight rating on it is pretty high but um, it makes it so that I end up having to have these little gaps between the servers, which I'm not the biggest fan of. It's not a huge deal, but something that you guys should be aware of. Um, and all the products I used here will be linked in the description, so if you're considering buying those shelves, uh, just keep that in mind. They are very sturdy, very nice, high quality, good looking shelves, but they definitely are not the best when it comes to space optimization, whereas you can get uh, standard rails um, that have uh, kind of just a lip shelf on them. They don't support as much weight, but will use the, um, they're, they're thin enough that you're not going to use extra space uh, with the server, so um, that's just something to keep in mind, whereas rails you use exactly the space of the server was built out to, so just something to note. Um, now, um, the case itself, I'm actually also really happy with. I'm really surprised for the price. Now, of course, the fans that come with it um, is like one of the main complaints that anybody that reviews it has. I didn't even turn them on because, frankly, Rosewell does not make good fans. Um, even their higher end ones are not good at all, and the ones that come with cases and stuff, at least they're present in case you need to use them in a pinch. But I mean, generally speaking, they're useless. I'll probably like cut the cables off these and use them as like art on the wall or something like that. The Roswell fans are not ones that I would recommend using. Uh, so I saw all the Noctuas. They all fit well except for the two 80 millimeters. I had to really squeeze them in there. Um, it's partly because of the uh, Noctua have the rubber grommet on them, uh, which makes the, the frame a little bit thicker. But also I feel like Rosewell, they definitely could have spaced those just like an extra two or three millimeters. And there was room there for that. And it would have made it so there wasn't any issues with mounting a slightly thicker frame rubber grommet fans like that there. But I did manage to get them in. It was just a tighter fit than I prefer. Um, and nicely with the shelf is these are actually going to be really easy to work on. Just unplug the back and pull it out. Not that rails are that much harder, but there is extra buttons and stuff that you have to work with. Uh, obviously rails do hold things a little more sturdy um, because there's no movement, whereas the server right now, you grab it, you can move it side to side and back and forth because it's just sitting there. Um, but honestly, I'm fine with that. It's not, not a big deal. Uh, and everything's reconnected and functioning with it, so I'm actually really happy. The case was surprisingly good to build in though. Every part that could be potentially in the way of like big CPU coolers and stuff like that is removable, like some of the cross bracing that they have in there. The entire fan bracket is removable. The fan brackets on the front side are also removable. Everything's held together with screws, so it's all really sturdy and solid. Um, there is anti-vibration um, lifters for the power supply, which is also really nice. Power supply holes all lined up right. The only complaint that I have, and this kind of goes without saying with a lot of Roseville stuff, if I'm being honest, quality control and build quality in general isn't exactly the best. Now, that's fine for the price. I've actually never had that many complaints about their stuff for the price. So anyway, with Rosewell equipment, I don't always expect it to be the highest of quality, and that's just being completely straightforward here, but the pricing is usually really good on their stuff, so I'm okay with it. Um, and these are totally fine for a server use case, because sometimes the best quality stuff doesn't really matter when it's just gonna be sitting in a rack and nobody's gonna see it. And at least the outside is painted black and looks really nice. Um, there was no real like imperfections in the external uh, bit, so I was pretty happy with that. Uh, there were some like stripped out screws for um, 
one of the like mounts that holds in the the top plate on the server and stuff like that now there's still plenty it doesn't matter but uh, it's just something to keep in mind if you have a couple that are stripped don't be surprised um, and then the hard drive brackets are actually pretty nice but there's some imperfections in those as well that um, are making it so that I can't bolt things down as tight as I would like because uh, some of the screws for the SSDs don't fit. Now for hard drives it should be totally fine and they actually do include hard drive screws with the extension on them so you can use the anti-vibration pads so that's pretty great. They include extra standoffs and other screws like that, zip ties, so overall a pretty great experience actually. Um, like I said, I'll link all the stuff in the description. Um, it, it was a pretty fun build though and, and, and I'm happy and the next step is going to be to try and get that guy done, uh, which I probably won't have any filming of that. And then I'm gonna do a project of cleaning up this little server rack. So you guys will see that. But there should be some reviews coming out uh, first of uh, at least my FX Tech Pro one and maybe my Model F keyboard as well. So I'll be talking about both of those for you guys too. And um, hopefully this summer we got some custom loop updates coming, but we'll see uh, when new GPUs come out. So that's another big project that's coming, but uh, there'll be stuff in between that, of course. So thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon down below because Otherwise, you're probably not going to really see our stuff because our channel isn't huge, so you got to be notified directly. Um, that's just how it works on YouTube, unfortunately. And, um, you know, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this project. Let me know if you've done something similar, if you have questions about how to go about doing something like this yourself, uh, or if you have recommend if you want recommendations for uh, different case configurations or, or whatever it may be. Um, here to help you guys out. I love working with servers. It's my... Uh, next best thing to working on on water cool desktops so uh, if you guys have questions I'm happy to help out uh, thank you everybody and I'll see you in the next one